So here's a very important exercise. This should actually be like a lemma in my opinion in the book. They should state this as a lemma in the book. But they put it as an exercise. This is number 31 in your book. Uh, it's actually part A, just part A of the exercise. So 31A. And let's see, how is it stated? It says, if A and B are elements of a group G and the elements A and B commute, in other words, AB equals BA, then AB raised to the following power, order of A, order of B, is the identity. So keep in mind that A, B are elements of some group. We don't know if they're numbers or what, but order of A is a positive integer. Order of B is a positive integer. Okay, let's see if we can prove this. Proof. So let's begin with suppose A and B are elements of a group and these two elements commute. Now, I'm going to call the order of A, I'm going to call it S. So let the order of A be S. So it's the least positive integer such that A to the S gives you the identity. And the order of B, I'm going to call T. That would be the least positive integer B, uh, T, least positive integer T such that B to the T gives you the identity. So now what I want to focus on, I want to focus on um, uh, A, B raised to the order of A, order of B. So what's that? That's AB raised to the ST, right? Another name for order of A is S, another name for order of B is T, so ST. So what I'm going to do, I am going to basically distribute ST to every element. Why can we do that? So we can do this because A and B commute since... A and B commute. So I think we proved that in a previous video. When A and B commute, you can play this kind of distributive property for exponents. Yeah, we call, we call this a fact, an important fact in the last video. Now we can rewrite this as what? A to the S to the T. And the next one we can write as B to the T to the S. Now, a to the s is the identity. Right, that's what a to the s is. It's the identity. Why is that? That's because the order of a is s. And b to the t is going to be the identity. Why is this green b to the t the identity? That's because the order of b is t. So we got the identity to the T is the identity, the identity to the S is the identity, the identity to times the identity is identity. So that proves it. AB raised to the order of A times the order of B is the identity. End of proof. Very easy. So that should have been like a lemma in the book. And the next thing we're going to do is exercise 33. This is a tough one. This actually uses 31A. This should be a theorem, like a major theorem in your book. They should state this as a theorem in your book. It's so important. I don't know why they just put it as an exercise, but we're going to work it. So this is exercise 33, page 202, in section 7.2. Um, what does this say? If A and B are elements of a group, G with those elements commuting, in other words, AB equals BA. And they're relatively prime, in other words, the greatest common divisor of their orders. I should say their orders are relatively prime, not that the elements are relatively prime. We don't know if they're numbers, but their orders are relatively prime. It means their GCD is 1. The greatest common divisor of their orders is 1. Then the order of A times B is equal to the order of A times the order of B. Now, this is actually pretty tough to prove. So I'm going to go through it step by step. So proof. Here, yeah, we're going to assume all this. Red stuff. Suppose 
A and B are elements of a group G with A and B commuting, AB equals BA. And the greatest common divisor of the orders being one. In other words, they're relatively prime. They have no primes in common. Their prime, their their orders have no primes in common. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let uh, the order of A, I'm gonna call it S. The order of B, I'm gonna call it T. And the order of AB, I'm gonna call what do I want to call it? N. So basically what I want to show, I want to show that n equals st. I want to show n equals st. So the first thing, first, I'm going to show that n is less than or equal to st. And then after that, we're going to show st is less than or equal to n, so therefore they'll be equal. So first, we show this. Let me write that out. First, we show n is less than or equal to Okay, how am I going to do this? So by number 31, so we've just proven 31, that means AB to the ST power equals the identity. That's exactly what 31 says, right? AB to the ST power equals the identity. Now, if you apply theorem 7.9 by theorem 7.9 number 1, the order of AB has to divide ST. What was the order of AB? It's N, right? So N divides ST. Now, these are all positive integers, so that means N is less than or equal to ST. Okay, pretty simple. That's the easy part of the proof. So the second part of the proof is the hard part. A second. We show that st is less than or equal to n. If we can do that, then we'll be done the proof. We'll be able to show that st equals n. In other words, order of a times order of b equals the order of ab. So this is where it gets tricky. So let's first note Uh, if I take a to the nt power, that's the same thing as a to the nt times the identity e. In other words, a to the nt times e to the n, right? The identity is e to the n. In other words, a to the nt, so I'm going to replace this e here, right here, this blue e with b to the t. So why can I replace this blue E with a blue B to the T? Well, if you remember back here, the order of B was T, right? The order of B was T, so that means B to the T is the identity. So the way we can write this, we can write this as A to the NT, B to the NT. And because we know A and B commute, right? We know A and B commute, AB is BA. We can use that important fact from earlier to use the distributive property over the um, uh, star operation. So exponents distribute over the, the operation. So a, b to the nt. So this is since a, b commute, since a and b commute, since a and b commute. You can distribute the exponent over the star operation. But what's in the, okay, so now we can do a trick. We can say this is a, b to the n to the t. Well, wait a second, what's AB to the n power? AB to the n power is the identity. So we got the identity to the, to the T. Why is AB to the n power the identity? Well, remember the order of AB is n, right? Order of AB is n, that's back here. I'll put this in yellow. AB's order is n, right? So AB to the n is the identity. But what's the identity to the t power? The identity to the t power is the identity. Okay, so what do we have? We have a to the n t power is the identity. So it follows by theorem 7.91. 
7.91, that the order of a, what was the order of a, divides nt, right? Divides this exponent nt. What was the order of a? The order of a was s. So that means s divides nt. Now these are all positive, right? S is positive, N is positive, T is positive. Uh, one more thing, hold up. Don't forget that these S and T were relatively prime, right? Remember that the order of A and the order of B are relatively prime, so S and T are relatively prime. So since the greatest common divisor of S and T is one, then that means S does not divide T, S has to divide N. Very important. So it follows that since S and N are both positive, S is less than or equal to N. Okay. Also, we're going to do something similar. Also, B to the NS, that's the same thing as E times B to the NS. That's the same thing as e to the n times b to the ns. And another name for e, well, let me use a different color. I'll use red here. No, that's not red, is it? Let's use an orange color. Another name for e here is, another name for e here is, I'm going to do right in terms of A. A to the S, right? So right here. Notice that the order of A is S. So in place of E, I can write A to the S. It's going to be A to the S to the N equals B and S. Yeah, so A to the S equals E because A has an order of S. So rewriting this... You're going to have A and S, B and S. And because you have commutativity with regard to A and B, you can write this as AB to the NS. You can uh, distribute that exponent over the, the star operation. So this is because um, um, A and B commute. So since b commute. But wait a second. a, b to the n power to the s is how we can rewrite that. But what's another name for a, b in yellow to the n power? That's the identity, right? That's because the order of a, b was n. So you get the identity, the s, which is the identity. So what does this tell us? If b to the n, s power, b to the n, s power equals identity, that means the order of b so by theorem 7.91, um, the order of B divides NS. What was the order of B? The order of B is this blue T, right? So that means T divides NS. T divides that. But wait a second. The greatest common divisor of T and S is 1. The right to relatively prime. So since the greatest common divisor of S and T is 1, then that means T has to divide N. So it follows from that. Oh, I, I don't want to write that yet. I don't want to write that T is less than or equal to N. I don't want to write S is less than or equal to T. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to put a... Let me put a little uh, highlight this. So this fact right here, very important. So I'm going to call this 2 right here. If I can get this to write. So T divides N, I'm going to call that 2. And back here, I want to call this 1. S divides N. So S divides N, T divides N. Those are two things we've proven. Now one more thing we can say... Since the greatest common divisor of S and T is 1, since S and T are relatively prime, 
then by one and two, I shouldn't say one, capital one and two, I should, I should say cap, there, that one and two. Since S is relative, since, since S and T are relatively prime, and what, you put one and two together, S times T divides N. This is a famous exercise. Um, let me just say C. This was exercise 17 from section 1.3. This is way back. We've only used it a few times this semester. So if you have S divides N, T divides N, S and T are relatively prime, then S times T has to divide N. Okay. So note we have S times T divides N. S, T, and N, they're all positive, so it follows that S, T must be less than or equal to N. Okay. So earlier we proved that what? N is less than or equal to T. Now we proved S, T is less than or equal to N. So hence, S, T equals N, or N equals S, T. That is the order of AB, that's what N was, equals the order of A, which was S, times the order of B, which was T. That's it, that's the proof. This is a pretty useful fact when calculating orders of elements that are mixed together. Let's do a few exercises here. Code exercise, singular. Okay, just a single exercise to follow up with this theorem. Uh, let's suppose A and B are elements of a group G. A, B equals B, A. So A and B commute. The order of A equals 15. And the order of B equals 14. So notice that A has an order of 15, B has an order of 14. They're relatively prime orders, right? There are no primes in common between 15 and 14. That's very important. So in order to use our theorem, we have to have that the orders are relatively prime. So I want you to determine the following orders. I want you to find the order of the element AB. So AB is gonna be an element you get by multiplying A and B together. I want you to find the order of that element. I want you to find the order of A to the fifth times B to the seventh. And I want you to find the order of A to the 9, B to the 21. So three orders. So the first one, the order of A times B, well, the orders are relatively prime. 15 and 14 are relatively prime, so we can write this as the order of A times the order of B. So that'd just be 15 multiplied by 14, which I don't know much about multiplication. Uh, calculator. I don't have a calculator. 15 times 14. I'm terrible at this. Doing it in my head. 15. I got a calculator. 15 times 14. 210. So what that means is you'd have to raise AB to the 210th power to get the identity. That would be the smallest positive integer that would work. So A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, 210 copies of A, B until you get back to the identity. So you wouldn't want to do that by hand. Uh, the next one, we want to find the order of A to the fifth, B to the seventh. So according to our theorem, we can break this apart. This is going to be the order a to the fifth times the order of b to the seventh. Now how do we find the order of a to the fifth? Well, go back to theorem, uh, what was it? 7.9 part three. Theorem 7.9 part three, the one that I showed. And it says that the order of a to the k is the order of a divided by the greatest common divisor of the order of a with k. Divide that out. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 
just make some space here. The first one's going to be order of a divided by the greatest common divisor of order of a and 5, multiplied by the order of b divided by the greatest common divisor of the order of b and 7. Okay, so the order of a was, what was the order of a? 15? We're going to take 15 divided by the greatest common divisor of 15 and 5 times, what was the order of b? 14. 14 divided by the greatest common divisor of 14 and 7. So that's going to give us, what, 15 over, what's the greatest common divisor of 15 and 5? 5 times... 14 over, what's the greatest common divisor of 14 and 7? Seven, 7. So we're going to get 3 times 2, which is 6. So the order of a to the 5th, b to the 7th, is 6. So if you took a to the 5th, b to the 7th, you'd have to have 6 copies of that to get to that end. All right, so let's do one more. We wanted to do a to the 9th, b to the 21st. We wanted the order of that element. So we can say this is the order of a to the ninth, order of b to the 21st, multiply those together using our theorem. Their orders will be relatively prime because, well, the order of a and the order of b were relatively prime. Okay, so using theorem 7.93, we're going to have what? Order of a divided by the greatest common divisor of the order of A and 9. And then we're going to have what? The order of B divided by the greatest common divisor of the order of B, 21. What was the order of A? I forgot. 15. So we got 15 divided by the GCD, 15 and 9. And what was the order of B? The order of B was 14. So we're going to have 14 divided by the greatest common divisor, divisor of 14 and 21. Missing in parentheses. In other words, let's see, 15 over, what's the greatest common divisor of 15 and 9 is 3, right? Times 14 over, what's the greatest common divisor of 14 and 21? That's going to be 7. So here we're going to have, what, 5 times 2, in other words, 10. So the order of a to the 9th, b to the 21st is 10. In other words, we have to raise a to the 9th, b to the 21st to the 10th power to get back to the identity. That's the smallest power. All right, so I hope you've benefited from this.